Good morning. Welcome to worship on this uh, Christian Family Day or Mother's Day. And uh, the, uh, let's see, sixth Sunday in the season of Easter as we look at our liturgical times. So during the next, um, well, today and, and the next few weeks, we will mark several of our liturgical holidays that perhaps we sort of maybe overlook a bit at times, but they'll be with us. And I just want to remind everybody that Pentecost is May 28th. So red, reds, I don't know if the Cardinals are playing that day or not, but uh, Cardinal red, uh, Christmas red, Valentine's red, uh, 4th of July, Memorial Day red, lots of possibilities for red. And as we look at announcements, uh, the bulletin is given in loving memory of their mother, Margaret Willaret, by Stephen Willaret and family. The altar vases are given in, in loving memory of her mother, Jerry Scheid, by Karen Orr. Uh, we thank Reverend Charles Preston for serving as liturgist, Betty Mezaras for greeting, and Dan Comer for serving as music technician. And in our calendar, uh, remember, at the end of service, there's um, uh, little flower cups, part of a Christian ed tradition that you have uh, women, the women receive a flower, or you can take one for a woman uh, that you want to share with, and that's, uh, they're available in, in the narthex. No? And the elevator. By the elevator door. Okay, so kept, kept the dirt by the elevator door. So um, you can go down through the elevator, or if you go out the front steps, just walk around in, in the elevator and grab one. And uh, we begin our blankets and tools offering, Church World Service, which traditionally, again, we uh, gather from Mother's Day through Father's Day. So uh, any time during that time. Uh, Monday's the regular, Tuesday is regular, Wednesday is regular, chancel choir. Reminder, we do have a rehearsal Wednesday with Almeida. Thursday is Ascension Day, and Thursday evening, the Cemetery Committee, the Scatter Garden Committee, and the Church Council will all meet together at the Maryville site at 6 o'clock. Next Sunday is the Herald deadline, so get those articles in as soon as you can. And uh, next Sunday there will be Fellowship Hour, sponsored by the Chancel Choir, Tenors, and Basses. And next Sunday we will hear more about the WISE program uh, for being, um, oh boy, welcoming, inclusive, supportive. Well, there's another one. Anyway, for those, um, for uh, all the, the various ways of neurodiversity. And our uh, script uh, will be, the order will be sent in after next Sunday. So uh, see Betty Mezaras uh, with script orders and to take care of, um, to care, take care of those orders for the month. And let's see, that, would be the announcements that I have. Others at prayer time. Does anyone have another announcement? Like, Mike, you must have something. Mm. Wait. Exciting weekend. <laughs> We had 336 plants delivered and we sold 300 and, uh, these numbers aren't gonna come out right. Anyway, we sold 306 plants and we sent 28 back. They took so, back what we didn't sell. So, yeah. <clears throat> Friday we got really, really busy with people <laughs> in charges and the whole works. Yesterday was slower, money-wise, I got to do some, count. we got way more money than we're supposed to have, but a lot of, <laughs> well, a people, lot of, were pe saying, keep a the lot of people gave donations, and so if this is all true, it's over $2,000 we made off of this, so, <laughs> you know, anyway, so don't hold me to that figure, but I really think it's close. 
And so I got names of people, and I may have forgotten people, but, you know, these were troopers out there. We had Bob Hollenbeck, Bob Jacobs, David Gaines, David Douglas, John Relicky, Mar my wife Mary Jo, my daughter Beth, Kiki, Beth Partney, Joan Mueller, Angela made phone calls, and if I forgot someone, I'm sorry. And, <laughs> and Carla was out with more well, I didn't support. do anything. <laughs> yeah, she was blessing all the plants, so oh, okay. we're okay. So anyway. I was keeping the rain away until 3 o'clock on until Saturday. It really came loose about 10 to 3. So <laughs> yep. anyway, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Anyone else with announcements? Then let us, oops, let us listen for the bells calling us to worship. <laughs> Isn't that nice? We can just say. <laughs> Alar has a happy face, doesn't he? Well, I guess he can't really change his face, can he? But are you always happy? Do you always have a smile on your face? Do you always get along with everybody? You know, when, uh, especially with your brothers and sisters and your classmates and your parents, mm, do you ever use the evil eye? When I was a teacher, I learned to use the evil eye some, and it worked. Um, back teaching in 1978 to 82, and, but yet, sometimes when we're angry, do we ever have a reason to be angry? Well, sometimes, yeah. Because if Connor sees somebody punch Braden and push him down, Connor has a reason to be angry. He doesn't want to see Brayden beat up on, you know, picked on or anything. There's reasons to be angry. What do we do with that anger? What do we do with that anger? Well, this scripture says we bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all, clothe yourselves with love. Now, okay, that sounds really great, doesn't it? So when, when uh, somebody has picked on Braden, then Braden just forgives them. Mm-hmm. It's not that easy, is it, at times? I'm saying it's not that easy. And as adults, as, as all ages, we have times when... We have what's called righteous anger. When we, we really do have reason to be angry, and so how do we deal with that anger? Well, we don't react with violence. We don't react in hateful ways. Instead, we try to find ways to bring love and peace into the picture. Idealistic? Sure it is. Now, today is Mother's Day. Have you never been angry with your mother? And mothers, have you ever never been angry with your children? <laughs> okay. I know better than that. But what continues? Love. You know, love touches that anger, helps us deal with that anger. And sometimes it's not our own mothers, but sometimes um, not everybody is the best of mothers, but we find people that we can be uh, turned to and we can trust with love to be like loving, caring, forgiving mothers. And we be that to others who we see that are in special need of that. And that's not just moms, that's dads, that's everybody. 
we find ways that we can bring down some of the anger and meet it with love and to just try to build what, um, what this scripture in Colossians says, to bear with one another, forgive each other, and clothe yourselves with love. Idealistic? Oh, but we can work at it because God is with us and Jesus commands it and the Holy Spirit inspires us. Could you have a prayer? Dear God, we thank you for putting a smile on our face most of the time and for helping us to find that smile again when there are difficult times. Be with us and help us to care for one another. Help us to be those that are beacons of your love, gifts of your love in this world. And help us to build peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And so as they go to Sunday school, we will listen to the prelude, Mama's Knees.
Let us join in the responsive call to worship and prayer. Everywhere we turn, there is something to experience. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed by everything. Everywhere we turn, though, God is already there. And the spirit of truth abides with us. Everywhere we turn, we can find love and peace. As we keep Jesus' command to love one another always. Everywhere we turn, we are invited to worship God. Who gives us abundant life. Let us pray together. Holy One, you are with us always and everywhere. Yet at times we are distracted by questions and diversions. As we search for answers, direct us away from unsatisfying human answers and direct us instead to turn life with you, united by love forever. Amen. There's probably other verses to that song. I would imagine there are, but we have four in, our, in yeah. ours. So let us join together in a Mother's Day litany, which is uh, borrowed or with permission uh, from uh, the Reverend Rob McCoy. I have no idea who that is, but this is a litany that he gives permission for uh, churches to use. All who gather here are sons or daughters. We praise God for the women who gave us life. For mothers brave, strong, compassionate, full of wisdom and grace. We give God thanks and praise. For mothers vulnerable, worried, frustrated, and hurried. We pray for peace. For relationships that are strained and no longer a source of joy. We pray for healing. For mothers who have died, that live no longer with us. 
but whose light shines on in our hearts and memories. Pray for those that mourn and give God thanks for life eternal. For mothers who grieve, who have lost children born or unborn. We weep with those with broken hearts. For those who are struggling to raise children who are tired and weary. We pray that we may be their village, offering real help in hard times. For those who are preparing emptier nests. We both celebrate and mourn with you and hope their wings as strong as their roots are deep. For stepmothers navigating the pitfalls and joys of creating a new family. We pray for wisdom and patience. For grandmothers who are doing the hard work of raising children again. We pray the caregivers have those who care for them. For those who are waiting and sometimes struggling with the biological process to bring new life, and for those who are waiting for adoptive process to be fulfilled. We wait eagerly with you and offer you our hand to hold in the trials. For women who do not have children, but teach, lead, care for, and guide the children of others. We give God thanks and praise. For the mothers, sisters, daughters in our midst and around the world, for the women who, created in the image of God, give not just life, but abundant life. For women fighting, struggling, and sweating for the sake of others. For women caring, compassionate, and crying with the heart of Christ. For the caregivers, prophets, preachers, teachers, leaders, shepherds, healers. For moms in their wide variety and many forms. We give God thanks and praise. You may be seated. Our New Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely spiritual you are in every way. For as I went through the city, and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. For one ancestor he made all peoples to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. And as that they would search for God and perhaps fumble about for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Thanks be to God for this promise.
That's a, a song that is partially based on um, Proverbs 31, if you'd like to read a scriptural that uh, goes with that song and listen to it later too. Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Listen for the good news of the gospel. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Thanks be to God for this lesson. May the Holy Spirit inspire the presentation and hearing of this reflection that we might learn to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Last Sunday, our gospel lesson focused on God the Father and God the Son being united as one, with Jesus telling his disciples, who could visually see him, that they could also see or know God in him. Today we pick up where that lesson left off in verse 14, and we pick up in 15, and continue with Jesus' promise that God will give them an advocate to be with them forever, to be with them when they will no longer see Jesus. In other words, after his physical death on the cross, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. This advocate is more often called the Holy Spirit in our current understanding, but whether named advocate, counselor, guide, comforter, paraclete, divine spirit, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, in whatever language, it is a gift to each believer and the world given to inspire and give life to faith. The scriptures vary on the exact way the disciples received the Holy Spirit. In John 20, chapter 20, on the evening of Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to the disciples in a locked room, showed them his hands and side, and said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The writer of the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts reports that just before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they received a power from on high and were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then in chapter 2 of Acts, he reports that on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came upon them in the rush of wind, divided tongues of fire, and amazing language abilities. We will celebrate, as I said, Pentecost Sunday on May 28th this year, because by tradition it is 50 days after Easter. And we'll wear red and use red chancel claws and celebrate communion together, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now the Gospel of Matthew concludes with the risen Jesus commissioning the disciples to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. 
Mark's gospel does not include direct information about the giving of the Holy Spirit, but of course, that doesn't take anything away from what the other scriptures do include. In the early Christian church and through the centuries, the Holy Spirit is in the unity of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, which we will celebrate on Trinity Sunday, June 4th this year. While the theological doctrine and history of the Trinity is a bit of a tangled web of understandings, perhaps that is what leads us to spirit-filled belief that that tangled web is united as the one true God. The Holy Spirit as our advocate in today's lesson is the spirit of truth. I call this truth with a capital T. I call it God truth that goes beyond our understanding of human truth because human truth seems to change depending on who or what the powers that be say it is. Human truth can be so flexible and fluid that it changes on whims or so ironclad that it refuses to change even when refuted or proven wrong. But God truth, capital G and T, God truth, empowers life above all other matters. It is above the variations of scripture and creed and the variations of denominations and churches. It is above the failures of history when Jesus' commandments to love are not followed. God truth is love shared not only in the Trinity, but also in all who believe. Thus the Spirit gives life with the Father and Son, abundant life and love put into action. Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor, an Episcopal priest, has creatively described the Holy Spirit this way. When Jesus let go of his last breath, willingly, we believe, for the love of us, that breath hovered in the air in front of him for a moment, and then it was set loose on earth. It was such a pungent breath, so full of passion, so full of life, that it did not simply dissipate as so many breaths do. It grew in strength and in volume until it was a mighty wind which God sent spinning through an upper room in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. God wanted to make sure that Jesus' friends were the inheritors of Jesus' breath, and it worked. Well, as Jesus' friends today, we too are the inheritors of Jesus' breath as the Holy Spirit blows life and love through disciples in action everywhere and forever. This coming Thursday, May 18th, is Ascension Day when by tradition we celebrate Jesus' ascension into heaven 40 days after his resurrection. And that's why we sang Crown Him with Many Crowns for our first hymn today as preparation for ascension. Jesus' ascension removed any earthly limitations to his presence. He no longer was limited to just one place or to the eyes of those who were around him. Jesus' ascension opened everywhere everywhere and everyone to his eternal presence. Perhaps his eternal presence was at work in Athens some years after his ascension. For one day, the Apostle Paul noted an Athenian worship altar with the inscription to an unknown God, which was not the capital G God in their understanding. Well, at least not quite yet. But Paul was about to change that. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, he shared God's love with them, beginning from creation 
and through the call for repentance and the raising of Jesus from the dead. Paul offered the one God, not formed by human hands or objects, the one true God of life for all. We do not know how many of those who heard Paul or heard others tell what Paul had said that day became believers, but I am certain that the Spirit was at work in mighty ways then and still is today. How might the Spirit be blowing through the world now? Well, some will offer theological and doctrinal understandings or requirements. Some will offer obedience to the commands to love one another. Some will offer simple presence or advocacy for the hurting. Some may not use the words or traditions of Christian history, yet be spirit-filled. Statistics say that Christian identity is declining among people now, with fewer people labeling themselves as Christians. Yet many who call themselves spiritual or cosmic-inspired reference the universe as their guiding principle for good life. Although they may not say so, or even believe so, but I wonder if they ever connect the universe they believe in with the one who created the universe in Judeo-Christian tradition. Could they be like the Athenians who had an altar to an unknown God with their reverence for the guiding principle of the universe? Could the Spirit be working with them in ways they and we might not put into our words? I believe so, because the Spirit is the eternal advocate for love and life that Jesus both commanded and gave for all God's people in every time and place. Stephen R. Adams wrote a simple yet profound song in the early 1970s that speaks of the Spirit's, Spirit's presence. For Adams says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is love. There is comfort in life's darkest hour. There is light and life. There is help and power in the Spirit, in the Spirit of the Lord. As I thought about those words and the scripture readings today, it really struck me how much I trust the Spirit to be with me in all of life. As I look back at the difficult times and the wonderful times, and at the more frequent, ordinary times, I see the power of the Spirit guiding me in Jesus' love. For the Holy Spirit has inspired my life and always will. And I know, I know I need that more than any worldly possibilities. We all do. We all need the Holy Spirit. We all need the still speaking, creating, saving, inspiring, forgiving, commanding, loving God, the one true God who draws us close and draws us together, who unites us in the unity of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in awe-filled ways. Thankfully, we are never left alone because as Jesus promised, the Spirit abides with us forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.
may be seated. As we begin our time of prayer, we remember those in nursing, assisted, and independent living, Earl Binger, Marsha Binger, Ruth Buer, Hilde Few, Joanne King, Karen Ludicky, Marjorie Schmidt, and Jerry Schonk. At home, Chloe Affalter, Isabella Boyer, Carol Braunmeier, Christopher Clark, Myra Cook, Bonnie Forneszewski, Mary France, Lucard Fries, Melba Grady, Lou Hassey, Norman Henty, Chuck King, Mina McBrien, Cindy Meyer, Sandy Mueller, Cliff Robertson, Merle Rose, June Stilley, and Nancy Wilson. And in the Illinois South Conference, Trenton St. John UCC, Reverend Christy Smith, Trenton Freedens UCC, Reverend Dr. Tim uh, Daryl Harrison, and retired pastors, Reverend Robert and Doris Utke. And uh, in our prayers, we lift um, the family of John Nichman's twin brother. John Nichman's twin brother died on Friday, and arrangements are still pending at Bowie in St. Charles. Yes, but uh, John is one of five brothers and the, the, uh, the last continuing, and we uh, lift John and all the family in our thoughts and prayers. And also, uh, my stepsister, Melissa, uh, died on Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, bringing peace to her long battle with cancer and uh, the final weeks in hospice. And um, the arrangements, they're meeting with the crematorium on Monday, so I don't have arrangements yet, but uh, what there will be will be in Las Vegas. And I will not, be, uh, will not be going to that, but please keep our family in, in thoughts and prayers. As, as I said, my brother died in March of 22, and my sister's husband died in September of 22, and now our sister dies in May of 23. And uh, so lift our, you know, lift our hearts, our faith is strong as the Nichman family's faith is also strong, and all who are looking this day to remembrances of mothers or mother figures, and uh, those who are lifting our uh, family and all families in our prayers. Are there additional concerns or joys? Uh, Cheryl? A co-worker who is having cataract surgery tomorrow. Uh, Dave? Okay, Melissa Lane likes to say we are so very proud to announce Cole Scarborough graduates from Missouri State um, this Friday with a degree in computer science and cybersecurity. He is moving to Kansas City to start his next chapter of his life. Wow. Cool. And Cole is, I don't know, six foot, six foot many inches. <laughs> so, <laughs> Marilyn? Okay, Danny, little Danny is the winner of the school district fourth grade spelling bee. Right. And are there any others? There must be more. I was trying to think who would be graduating high school this year. I think one of the Smallies, maybe. And uh, Brady is graduating. Um, Walkers have a grandson. Aaron is graduate. Tanner. There, okay, <laughs> graduating. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, hearing aids are great, but they're not perfect. <laughs> Anyone else? The praying for the family of Josh, Amos. 
He's been missing for some time. Anyone else? Mike? <laughs> Mike needs the mic. Anyway, we've had, this is a joy for the church. We've had three events back to back. It's taken a lot of people to volunteer to make this happen. We've had a concert, we've had barbecues, we've had hanging baskets. Going before that, we've had spaghetti suppers, we've had meat sales, we've had a goodness, gosh, I'm not gonna get it right, soup of goodness, something like that, I'm sorry. We've had a market, we've had all kinds of things going on. Yesterday, people came up and said, Take the money, we don't want change. You're doing so much. That's good. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> anyway, they said a couple of them towards the end said this church is doing so much. So much and it's so visible. And it can't be done without all. <coughs> I shouldn't have started this. <laughs> Sorry. It shouldn't, it can't be done without everyone. And so we're doing something good. Those that are home listening, the people here, this is what a church does. You're going to have a break from ESOS for a few months. But be ready for August because there's a lot going on from August on. So we need you again. So anyway, that's good for us. That's good for the church. We're helping the community. <clears throat> We're taking care of the church. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. And the Holy Spirit is blowing mightily with, with us, through us. Yes, Ronnie. Two years Tuesday, I've, uh, but for 42 years. Oh, okay. I, I didn't hear what the event was. I just heard it was two, 42 years Tuesday for marriage. Wonderful. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to Europe. You know, aren't you going to Greece? Are you going to Athens? Well, go find this, this, this place. <laughs> Bring me a picture. Okay. Of the, they probably have, you know, they have where Lincoln slept and where uh, Socrates spoke and whatever. They must have. They might even have a, a shrine to, uh, to this or the unknown God. Okay, wonderful. And let's see, is this a trip that someone else from church is going? Barbara, Barbara Houston's going along? So, okay. Will the Holy Spirit be with you all? And let us be in a spirit of prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for your gift of peace, which the world can neither give nor take away. Let it calm our troubled hearts, that we might share it with our troubled world. We thank you, God, our Heavenly Father, for not leaving us orphaned to face the world alone. Let our unity as brothers and sisters draw us together in peace. We thank you, Spirit Advocate, for guiding us and inspiring us to service. Let your wisdom teach us to practice peace by obeying Jesus' commands and living his love. Today we rejoice to worship you with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind in response to your divine love. Help us see the good around us and build up your kingdom on earth. 
Help us care for and love one another through word and deed. On this day designated to celebrate family life and the mothers and mother figures who love each generation, we lift to you prayers for good love and good life shared with obedience to your commands. The words of our prayers lift to you all those with special needs, needs for healing, comfort, and hope. Our words lift to you all those who are in special need of your spirit's care as they face major decisions and sometimes uncertain possibilities. Our words lift to you our desires for wise and compassionate political leadership all over the earth. In addition to words, we lift to you our deeds that we might be ever more loving and caring. Inspire us to answer your call to service as we each are gifted and united as faithful members of the body of Christ. Receive our prayers, O God, and grant us your peace and blessing as we pray in the name of Jesus and as he teaches, saying, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we present our gifts, well, they probably aren't gold and silver exactly, but we present things that are not idols, things that are not intended to be idols in any way, but instead gifts that are intended to be signs of love and hope and God in all the world.
Will you join me in a unison prayer of dedication? With thankful hearts and hands, we offer these gifts, O God, to be blessed by you for good works. We do love you, and we do seek to obey your command to love others. Through the, our gifts and lives, we promise to remain faithful to you. Amen. we have come together to worship God, God whom we know in so many ways, sharing our life and our love and inspiring us. Now as we go out to serve, in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>